don't mind my unshaven beard because today is the review for the White Weenie 2019 Challenger deck, United Assault. What is going on friends? My name is Ike and today we have another review for the 2019 Challenger deck. Um, we have the White Weenie deck version. Today, the United Assault. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hope you stick around. Check out some games. Check out review. And of course, always check out my suggestions. Now, let's just get straight to the point, shall we? Let's get into the deck. This is what you would find normally in a White Weenie deck. And just for those who might not be familiar with White Weenie... Uh, weenie are little guys, uh, usually one drop, two drops, uh, anything that has small on, and you can get um, a bunch of them out onto the board very early and very quickly. And what they should do is they should buff each other, or there should be benefit for bringing out a very wide board. And when I say wide board, I mean a lot of creatures on the board. So... Of course, this deck will run things that do both of those in tandem, some of them. Um, but So let's go take a quick peek at the main deck, which is right here. Dauntless Bodyguard is there to protect uh, some of your more valuable creatures, uh, like a, a Banalish uh, Marshall. <laughs> Banalish, Banalish wa uh, Marshall. Listen, y'all, uh, sometimes I say words that are goofy. You just have to deal with me sometimes. The Banalish Marshal and some other cards. Uh, if a, uh, 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 a Johnny's Pride Mate gets really, really big, uh, sometimes you want to protect it. So that's really good for that. But besides that, we're going to have a lot of one and two drops. Look at these mana cost here. One, 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 two, 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 three, three, and four. A lot of little white weenies. Now we also have Legion's Landing. Legion's Landing, if you have three creatures or more attack at the same time, you transform this land into a legendary land. And the legendary land allows you to infinitely create one, one white vampires with lifelink. It's fantastic to continuously always putting pressure on your opponent. Uh, Haunted Witness and Healer's Hawk are just one drops that have lifelink. One of them summons a 1-1 one, one white soldier token with a uh, lifelink when it dies. The other one has flying. Then we have a combination of Le Leonin, uh, Vanguard, and where are you? A Johnny's Primate. These are great in tandem because one of them heals if you have uh, three or more creatures. And this one gains a 1-1 one, one counter for every single time you gain life. So... Uh, some crazy shenanigans can happen and can take place. Uh, Adan uh, Adanto Vanguard is great because it's basically indestructible unless the opponent plays something that exiles it or you cannot afford to pay the four mana, or the, excuse me, the four life to keep it alive, uh, which is great to pressure control decks. It's hard for them to remove if they do not have an exiling effect. We, of course, uh, this, this uh, Challenger deck is running two um, mythic cards, the History of Benalia. And this is fantastic purely on the uh, because this card right here is just a great tempo uh, three drop. You get two for two turns. You get a 2-2 two, two White Knight with Vengeance, uh, Vigilance, excuse me. And on the third turn, all of your knights get two, uh, plus two, plus one. And you actually have more knights than just... Um, the t the two two white knights that are created by uh, this card, like uh, Benalish, and I think there's another one somewhere. Aha, the Dauntless Bodyguard. Then we have Conclave to help remove creatures from the board. Uh, this is going to be useful against a number of types of decks. Uh, control certain mid range. Uh, if you're playing mono blue, if you can get one of these out onto uh, number one uh, of their flying creatures, uh, which is a good transition into the Sky Marcher Aspirant. If you have Ascend, and again, Ascend is you have 10 uh, permits, 10 or more permits, you get a City's Blessing, and this creature, 
basically uh, gains flying uh, as long as you have ten or more uh, non -per or excuse me permanents, which is really useful for those mono blues or those lone flyers. And I believe that's our only way to deal with flyers. Yes. We also have a couple of odd cards. And I call them odd because I understand why they're in, in this deck. They're a finisher. Um, but this is not the, a tier one version of what a white weenie deck would be, uh, in my opinion. Just purely my opinion. Because Pride of the Conquerors is a great finisher. But at the end of the day, the way in which you mostly lose with white weenie is board clears and running out of card draw. And this deck does not, uh, well, at least this main board does not contain any card draw whatsoever to help. So truly your, your main source of keeping up tempo is to make sure that your creatures stay alive. And sure, Pride of the Conquerors gives one health or two health if you have Ascending. However, there are cards, even in our sideboard, that I wish that we had multiples of, like Make a Stand, which gives your creatures 1-1 one, one in, indestructible to the end of the turn, though that's a little expensive. There's other cards that work really, really well in this deck um, that are not currently in it, and that will affect its review, and that's okay. But let's jump into the sideboard. By the way, 21 lands, 21 planes. Um, we have a number of cards in the sideboard to deal with certain specific types of decks. We do have an extra Conclave Tribunal. We have Shield Mare for any Gruel or Mono Red. Uh, this is a great card because when Shield Mare enters the bat battlefield or becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you gain three life. Also, it cannot be blocked by red creatures. Really good. I, we already talked about make a stand. Uh, the honor guard is great for uh, creatures entering the battlefield. Don't cause abilities to trigger. Uh, if you're playing stuff like uh, a chupacabra, its effect doesn't take place. Um, things along that nature that when a card comes into play, those abilities do not trigger. Mostly good against mid-range. Great to have two of them in the deck. Remorseful uh, Cleric, it, in my opinion, is going to actually be good against art like Phoenixes and is it decks that rely on bringing things from the graveyard to the to uh, to the battlefield. I would say that if Golgari was a little bit more powerful in the current meta, this might be very good against that as well. But you don't you barely see it. You do have uh, this awesome creature, which is going to be your go-to for um, any type of control deck, specifically Esper. Uh, black using um, black mana using uh, control decks because one it has first strike and two it has hex proof against black, which is fantastic. Uh, finally, baffling in is going to be good against creature uh, decks that are probably just as fast as mono white weenie, which is blue mono blue mono red. Um, any combination of aggro decks usually are going to be running something along the lines that a baffling in can deal with. Um, so keep that in mind as well. So we went over the deck. Let's go and play a couple of games and get our feet wet to see how the deck plays. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna mulligan this. I'm keeping a oh, sweet. All right, all right, man. All right, I'm going to turn one uh, Leon in because uh, I'm going to turn two Pride Mate, turn three uh, Banalish Marshall. Oh, this should be a fun little matchup. Please let me draw the land, man. Let me draw the land. You're playing fast there, drum code. If it attacked, I would not have actually done anything to... Uh, let's go ahead and play the uh, Aldanto Vanguard. Be great, great, great. I'm only going to attack with the Primate. Very good in that turn. This is a good start for us. We at least have a primate gaining uh, traction here. This is going to keep growing and growing because I'm not going to let the uh, Leon and Vanguard die. Unfortunately, they're also going to be gaining a lot of life and bumping up those wall growth walkers. So let's see which deck can deal the most damage. Huh? This uh, that land right there was a fantastic addition. 
to our hand. This is going to put a lot of pressure on him. I'm going to pay the four health so my Vanguard does not die. In my turn. Forgive me if you hear my daughter crying. Ooh, that is unfortunate. My guess is the Marshal is gone. Or the Primate, actually. I have a lot of really good creatures on board. Primate gone is kind of stinky, but hey, we have a uh, Marshal still. I think I'm going to go ahead and play the Dauntless Bodyguard. Place it on the Marshal. And we're going to play the Aspirant uh, Sky Marcher. Ah, screw it. Let's just play the whole hand. Ah, this is White Weenie, right? All right. Gain that life. Uh, we're going to attack with Vanguard. And we'll take the, the, the tick to the life. Yeah, okay, that's okay. We will probably attack wide next turn. Hmm. That is an absolute bummer. So we will go ahead and pay this. We will go ahead and pay this. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh. Oh, that's right. That doesn't matter because it's not technically. This is a great lesson, everybody. This is a great lesson. I had to make the mistake, but we all get to learn. See, that's the benefit of me making videos for you. Yay! Went off. Oh, bummer, man. What a turn of events. So, anything that has the word destroy will not kill something that is indestructible. But, minusing their a number of uh, attack and defense does not count as a destroying of a creature. So that is why all my creatures died. And that is why he BM'd me with a oops, which is probably deserving. But hey, that is a good way to learn. And I'm glad that I got to teach. Oh, goodness gracious. Uh, depending on what we draw, we're just probably going to concede. Ah, we're just, let's just concede anyway. There's no chance. Not with what they have right now. They're about to um, get a Vivian Reed going. All right. Let's think about this for a minute. Definitely think Knight of Grace is good purely because of its mechanisms for destroying a creature. Or excuse me, for its mechanisms <laughs> for uh, not getting destroyed itself. Honor Guard seems good. Baffling Inn also seems good, but I'm not sure if I want to go that route. I think I'm going to keep two Conclave Tribunals. I always seem to be... Get, by the way, I played a couple of games before. I always get rid of this Hunted um, Witness for some reason. I don't know. I just feel like he's out of place sometimes. I don't know. Pride of the Conquerors always seems to be leaving my main board. As well. I don't know. Should I do anything else? This can't get removed. This could be really good. No, they give a green green, and they have ways to remove this as well with... No, let's just keep this. I think I'm good. We'll see how this goes. I will play first. <laughs> Mulligan. Not a good start. Okay. We'll go ahead and just get, let's get this Knight of Grace down. And we'll go ahead and attack. Wall Growth Walker. Let's go ahead and get the Honor Guard down as well. A couple of our Creatures that we are using to protect us. Did they not hit a second land draw? Or am I missing something? <laughs> I 
they kept a hand with Sultai mid-range. They kept a hand with Sultai mid-range with one land in hand. Alright. Mistake. We we're learning a lot this game. Good job, team. Really want to keep it. Okay. We'll go with it. Look a little light here on the planes in there, bud. Looking a little light. Of course, I wouldn't expect anything less on turn three. Ooh, Vivian Reed, you gonna keep it? <laughs> that means he has no land in his hand. So, but what's that's exactly what that tells me. Let's just do what's the most what's the best play? I think the best play is wide. I will not attack with this because this can easily be blocked by the walker and I don't want to spend four life for nothing. Alright. It's fine. See, now that I feel like this is a really good play for me. Put it on the marshal. And now, do I, do I, I don't really have a trade, but I will, I'm okay doing this this time. Okay, spinning the four life. Unbelievable. You're going to put down a wild growth walker and get even more life too. It's uphill battle, folks. Are you kidding? <laughs> what? Part of me really thinks I should have placed those bafflings uh, into my into my main deck here. I don't really have a play here. This is basically my play. Do I attack with the other? They're just going to get blocked and I'm going to have to start, start spending so much life. Unbelievable. I really need one of those conclaves right now. ASAP. Oh, there goes all my creatures. I can't help they drew so well. You know what do you what are you to do here? What are you to do? Might as well. I guess I keep these in my hand for the time being. Don't draw a land. Don't draw a land. Don't draw a land. Okay, I'm cool with it. Hmm. Never mind. I'm not cool with it. Ooh, of our ask of contempt, eh? Hmm, a 9-11. Always, never forget. Part of me thinks I need a triple. No, I should just let him kill me, right? I don't know what to do anymore. Basically, about the GGs, friends. I'm just gonna drop everything. Because I die anyway. So, you know, might as well live a little bit. Live a little bit. Do it. I'm not doing anything to their 50 health. Alright, let's bounce out and start a new game. This one was a bit of a uh, 
crapshoot. I think this is okay. Keep it. Turn one, healer's hawk is good. To turn two, vanguard. However, if I don't get another mana, all this is for nothing. That's interesting. A mono blue with no one or two drop? Nope, is it? Saw that coming from a mile away. I did. Yes. So let's go ahead and drop the marshal. And we will attack with the vanguard. We're not attacking with the healer's hawk. I know that I wouldn't have died to the enigma drake, but I actually want to uh, have a blocker just in case he plays one spell. It does get, allow me to heal for two. Okay, just draw two cards. And this is the reason why, right here. I did not expect a divination, but hey. I'm glad that I drew that as well. Now I can play a number of Pride of Conquerors here to fake him out, but I don't think that's actually the play. I think this is the play. gonna let this that means he's gonna go down to six it's pretty low for him to do that what would he have to draw to basically remove this board I don't think electromancer into anything will fix the problem for him okay I don't think that the solution either. I think I have lethal on board, no matter what. And I can play these Pride of Conquerors just for BMing. Unless he has a trickster? Okay, not okay. Right. So I will attack with everything in Pride of Conquerors now, not for a BM, but for lethal? Here we go. Good first game there. Good first game. I really like the deck that it... Like, it, it does seem very... I, I know that the first game didn't really s show this. I do believe that the opponent drew very, very well. Um, but the deck feels pretty good in general. I think I bring in, no, do I bring in the Shermer? Can't be blocked by red, but how important is that? You think this deck is running Arc Like Phoenix and just did not draw any of them? Let's, I think I go with the same thing. I, I'm going to go with the very same thing. I'm not going to touch anything because I want to learn a little bit about this. Because I'm not 100% sure there's something that's very obvious to me to put in. Again, I'm, I'm new at White Weenie completely. I don't play White Weenie at all. So I'm still trying to learn the footing myself. Okay, that's good. Let's get turn one. Oh, hello. 
fantastic thing about the Legion's Landing is obviously the the one one that it creates, but it's a great turn one play, you know. Really hope I draw into another uh, land here. Okay, Terramander. That's great. That's exactly what I wanted you to draw for me. Okay, just gonna let it, me hit for a lot. That's rough. This card right here can do a lot of damage very quickly, and you don't really see it coming, because at a, at, at the moment you're you're like, okay, well I'll just let it hit for this time, and then all of a sudden it's a little too late to get anything to go. Uh, the, here's good news. I'm gonna play the marshal. I'm going to attack with all three. Um, does that change anything? No, I think I still do the same thing. I think I'm able to play the Vanguard too. Yep, I'll be able to play the Vanguard here as well. Okay. Sure. That does remove their Terramander. Brings them down to nine. I have a pretty ma massive board and now I have a Vanguard. I got double Vanguard here. A board clear. I can't think of a board clear right now that's is it that would destroy the board for three or four mana. Can be wrong. Yeah. I think that's GG. White Weenie's a little too fast for um, their deck. That was a great game. Shows a little bit of the power of the deck because I understand that it looks like that I'm drawing perfect with those marshals, but um, the deck is somewhat consistent even without me drawing marshals. Uh, let's play one more. See, this Leonin Vanguard is not really threatening. White Weenie, you know, we want to we wanna buff other things instantly uh, or the snowball our game plan. And this doesn't really do that. And I'm a little worried that if I keep it, there could be bad consequences. This at least gives me three turns to get a land. Perfect. I already got one right there. So we'll go ahead and play this... Uh, Sky Marcher right now. I'll bodyguard it next turn. Ooh, okay, this will be great. This will be a great demonstration. This kills both of these. This is why I don't want this to. I want to attack. I'm really wanting a third um, plane. Okay, so I can drop down a marshal to give these both two life. Okay, very neat. Ectos, uh, gutter bones, tempo, aggro thing. Ah, uh, this will do for now. We'll just go ahead and pass. Really looking for that third plane. Uh, that is not a good card for us. Very bad card for us. not know if I want to block or not. Part of me wants to... Well, I think if I can find that isle, uh, that plane, I think I can turn this around pretty decent in my favor. Oh, yes. <laughs> so they would have to send a trade out here. Let's just do the whole thing. Just so I can have that. I, th I thought about it, but it, I'm fine. So four, eight. I'm almost there. Yeah, you should definitely be trading with this. Of 
part of me thinks I should have um, bodyguard there, but uh, either I didn't think about it or I didn't find it that important. I'm not sure which one that is yet. Scary. The unfortunate thing about this right here is I cannot allow this marshal to die, and so I have to have this hit. keep this I'm not going to attack with anything he's saying nice that's interesting Do damage to my face gotcha got it yes right I think I'm basically dead. What? How would you do that? So we're just gonna not attack here. I'm I think I'm basically dead purely because I don't believe He's doing calculations. If he kills this, one, two, three, four. All right. I think I'm still okay here. I'll wait and let you know in a second. I think I'm okay. It's because I get health here. Get a lot of health. Did he just good game me, the bad manner me, but realize that he's dead? Don't tell me that. Oh, that's a misplay. Why didn't you play that first? <laughs> Oh, wait, that's right, because it's a legendary. Oh, I see what he GG'd he -G me there for. Okay, I gotcha. I gotcha. All right, so shield mares are definitely going in. Part of me thinks that a bath... Uh, I think that's good. Uh, part of me wants to really put in baffling ends too because I know that they probably don't run anything to get rid of them. I'll get rid of these um, The pride of conquerors actually was really good that game for heals, but I think I'm gonna remove it in favor of other things um, The honored guard isn't needed because most of the things that they have in third deck is things that if it dies, it does something. I'm gonna get rid of that as always because it just doesn't seem right. Uh, lifelink's good. I'm gonna get drop down one so I can play two of these baffling ends. Let's go with this. I'm just gonna keep this anyway. I, I think it's really good.
What you waiting on there, Thorny Bear? There we go. Okay, we'll go Vanguard number one here. Gain some life. This Marshal. Okay. This Marshal turn three is really good for us. It's a continuously continuation of gaining life with the uh, healer's hawk but also I don't have to force myself to spend four life on the vanguard like he can sacrifice the foot the foot light fiend on the vanguard and then try to ping it with his uh, maneuver I think I would have spent four life for that second marshal right here might this is the snowball effect. It, this might snowball the game into my favor. Okay, this is interesting. Would you play? Okay. A tithe taker. I don't believe that will be a good enough. Could go shield mare. No, I think this is too strong of a play to not play it. So we're going to play it. I think it's too strong of a play. And I will spend it because it's I already have twenty six life. I have the shield mirror. He has not seen the shield mirror, so he doesn't know I have it. Good game. Okay. I'm just going to stick with what I have and go ahead and just uh, get ready for game three. I guess they were ready as well. Alright, we're probably going first. If I'm going second, what would be the best set of play? A really freaking awesome hand. Got it! Got it! Legion's landing, eh? Turn two, three, attack with three, that transforms, I'll put another Legion Landing Gun. I won't transform that one. I, I guess, I don't know. I guess I could, I don't know. I don't know, not black. No need. Heal, pass the turn. Here, Tide Taker. That doesn't really affect me. Only thing I have, I think, is I've taken out of my deck. I'm not really worried about it. I'm actually not going to block with anything. Three damage does not bother me. Go ahead and skedaddle here, friends. Probably um, Vanguard. Yep, that's probably the correct play. We do have a afterlife here. Uh, I'll go ahead and Legion's Landing as well. This is great. I have a flyer now for this spirit. A Marshal would be a fantastic drop. Ooh. So I've been waiting to use this. That exiles as well, so I don't have to actually deal with their uh, white token that gets... Part of me 
thinks I wait. Oh, let's just attack with. I think I just attack with everything. That's fine. I th the reason I wanted to attack with everything is because I could have waited for a bigger turn, but I think placing the pressure on them like this is a little bit better. And I have an, a basically an infinite 1-1 one, one generator here. And see, that all could have changed. If they had all those deaths with uh, Judith come on board, that could have been sc way more scary for me. Uh, oh, I didn't stop at their end step. Oh, I couldn't have created one. We'll tackle with both. Wise, might as well. That dies. We'll go ahead and create our one one. Very interesting game. Now they have might have the 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 upper hand here purely because they have let me uh, put it in step stopper Jeez, another Judith I'm gonna let them hit the face because I can't afford to in me constantly Oh, that's fantastic. No, they didn't see that coming. Just gonna attack with a 2 2. Good game. Okay. Okay. Sweet. Good game. All right. Nice. Hey, let's, uh, I think we played enough, y'all. Let's go, uh, let's go review the deck. All right, friends, it's time for the review, and I want to make a couple of points before I give you my verdict. Um, I believe that this deck is actually, of the four, the most consistent. Uh, if, if I wanted to have the best winning record with my buddies, and there's four of us, and we all get to pick one of these decks, I'm going to pick the United Assault and the reason I'm going to pick it is its consistency. I think it's not the funnest of deck. I think that there's other ones that have a little bit cooler combos and synergies, but this one has great synergies. It has great consistency. And to be completely honest with you, it's, it's going to receive my highest rating. I'm going to give it a 4.25. 4 4.25. Purely because of its consistency and level of competitiveness. And it's fun to win, y'all. That's the bottom line. It's a little bit easier to play these type of decks than you, maybe a combo deck. So it's a little bit uh, less... Uh, it's a little bit more, forgive, more forgiving. I would also say that in our suggestion guide, which will come right after this review, there will be a deck that I wanted to show you uh, or a couple cards I want to show you that you can add to this, but you will notice that the core of a tier one 2019 April of 2019 tier one white weenie deck uh, is almost 85% of all the cards that you already have in this set. So I think for $30, you're getting a hell of a deal. I really enjoy these challenger decks because they are a fantastic intro into magic for individuals who do not have $300 to put into a deck. All right, let's get into suggestions because I know that we want to make sure that if we really want to be competitive, uh, we want to know what kind of cards we should put into this deck and why. Again, this deck has a fantastic core. There's not much we need to add to it, but there are a few things that I would mention. The Unbreakable Formation. Uh, this card came out with the last uh, Ravnica uh, expansion. Uh, creatures become indestructible. 
uh, which is fantastic for board clears. So I think that this kind of card being used in main board and a little bit maybe more in sideboard is going to be really good against certain decks that have a lot of board clears. Uh, this card will protect your creatures. And remember, as we spoke earlier, protecting your board is key number one in a white weenie deck because you don't have a lot of card draw. Venerated Loxica. Yes. I remember. So this guy I see constantly all the time. This came out with uh, Guilds of Ravnica. And this awesome card allows you the Convoke ability, which just in case you can read it right there on your screen, but I'll explain it. You can use your creatures to tap. You can tap them and use them as mana costs for the spell. Uh, it costs five normally, but if you have three creatures on board, you only need to use two mana and three creatures, and you put a 1-1 one, one counter on all the creatures, and you get a 4-4. Four, four. And if you recall from the games earlier, when I was going to be um, when I was winning and I was ahead, it was because I either had one marshal or two uh, Banalish marshals down at the same time. Because it, it ticked up the health of the, the creatures that I already had. So you, you tick up the health, and what basically takes place is it's, it gets out of range of certain uh, board clears or certain mechanics. And it does a ton of goodness to your board. Again, we're talking about um, keeping our board alive and placing pressure and snowballing the game. That is White Weenie in a nutshell. And this card, Loxodon, does a fantastic job with that. A little bit more expensive card, and also a little bit more flavorful. I don't have any of these crafted. Is, ooh, is the uh, Johnny Adversary of Tyrants. Uh, this is just a good card in general because it's only four mana and you're putting one one counters on top of uh, two cards. This is what you'll find in the tier one versions of the deck uh, because it gives you a emblem uh, at a minus seven. That is fantastic. At the beginning of your end step, create three one one white cat creature tokens with lifelink. If that hits the board, especially with the type of deck that you're running, it's basically GG. It's really cool. And uh, the other, the minus two ability, return target creature with converted cost of two or less to from your graveyard to the battlefield. Look at the deck, y'all. Everything is two or one. <laughs> two or less is everything can be that. You can bring back a ton of things. So, fantastic card. A Johnny adversary of the tyrants. And I believe that is all the things that you need to worry about bringing in. Ooh, no, no, no. Tithe Taker is the last one. This one is... <laughs> this one is not either in our sideboard or a main board. And the reason why this one is really good, it's really good against car cre uh, decks that are trying to cast cards or spells, instants basically, on their turn. I mean, excuse me, on uh, your turn any kind of like removal, it makes them cost one more. You have four of them in the deck, so you can play a couple of Tithe Takers and basically make any play that they want to play on your turn have to be played on their turn. So that is what my recommendations are. Those four specific cards in any combination here. There is a sideboard you can put in. Um, you can put in this lovely individual that will help you remove enchantments demystify just destroys an enchantment and it's a one mana cost and everything else you should own in this deck which is great you can mix and match the four uh, the five different choices of cards that I uh, basically recommend and suggested to you in any combination there are a couple of tier one decks that are not running 21 planes but they're running 20 so you can experiment with that as well. There's a ton of good stuff that this specific challenger deck can do. Again, that's why I rated it a 4.25. It's so close to being so good. Uh, it's the best one in my opinion. So, Friends, it has always been fun. I hope you enjoyed all four of these reviews. This was the, la the last one. If you guys like all of this stuff, I will bring more content to you just like this. Make sure you uh, give this video a thumbs up if you like what I reviewed. Leave a comment if you don't like uh, the score that I gave any of these decks. Would love to talk to you about it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button as well and click that 
bell on the side to make sure you, you get notified whenever I launch a new video. All right, friends, until next time.